Hi, this is Tom, Junky XL. Welcome to Studio Time with Junky XL. And today we're just going to talk a little bit about guitars and bass. <clears throat> I have a bunch of guitars and I have a few basses, and I always use them in one way or another in the, in the film score. And um, <clears throat> guitar was my um, uh, second real instrument that I started playing. After just like fiddling around on the piano, I got a drum kit when I was eight, and then I started playing guitar when I was roughly 12. And um, <clears throat> uh, here we see on the floor and on the table um, a bunch of pedals that I've uh, gathered over, uh, over the years. Uh, some of them are, are brand new, very new over the last two years that are just kind of laying here, but some really good oldies as well. Um, and here we see a bunch of older pedals that I've um, um, collected over the years that I used. Here we see, for instance, my very first um, uh, guitar tuner. It's pretty beat up. It's, I'm not even sure if it still uh, works, but it was my very first one. So uh, I keep that uh, close. Um, we see some Electro Harmonix pedals that I bought uh, back in the day. Um, this is a really old one too. I got this somewhere in the, somewhere in the 70s. Um, and a couple of newer pedals too, some distortion pedals. Um, I always have fun playing with these things. The Electro Harmonics are always great to play around with. Um, the full tone stuff is always absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's Pictronics, which is really interesting stuff. Um, um, it's all great to play around with. And um, I'm not an expert uh, guitar player. Uh, I'm not an expert on these pedals either. Uh, I just fiddle around with them and have a lot of fun creating, creating sounds. So. This is definitely, for me, uh, secondary to um, working with synthesizers and, and sound design and things like that, where I know out of the top of my head, like every model that was ever made and why it was being made and stuff like that. Um, I don't have that with guitars. Uh, I, I love talking to people that know all the Gibson models that came out and the Fender models and the amps and everything. And uh, I don't have that knowledge and I don't pretend to have that knowledge, but I do love to play guitar and bass and I do use it a lot. <clears throat> and um, so let's go to it. I'm just gonna grab my um, uh, Gibson guitar right here. This is one of my more favorite guitars. <clears throat> and uh, I have it hooked up through Cubase. Um, on a guitar rig with a simple Marshall amp with a with a little bit of crunch, but not a whole lot. Um, so let's start at the beginning of the chain, which is actually this thing right here. I've had this for a really long time. It's the Electro Harmonix Bass Micro Synthesizer, um, and. If I switch it on, we're not going to be hearing a guitar anymore. We're going to be hearing a synthesizer sound. And I have it set up with a filter and with an attack. So it slightly comes up and it slightly disappears. So this is what the guitar normally looks like. Sounds like, I should say. And then I press this thing and then it sounds like this. It's a really nice sound and um, I can actually open the filter a little bit more. I really like that, uh, let's, that sound. Um, back to the normal guitar and then the cable goes into this pedal right here which is the Boss Bass Limiter which is um, released, uh, I don't know, like 20 something years ago. And I don't use it for a bass, primarily I use it for guitar. So if I play it without, now with. It's really great. I was always a big fan of the, of the Police, Andy Summers and um, Adrian Ballou, the guitar player. And they always had that really bright belly sound with a lot of compression. And this is what that pedal does for me. So I'm very happy to have this thing. Uh, then we have the graphic fuzz and the Ibanez Tube Screamer. This was the first um, Ibanez pedal that I, uh, that I bought. Um, this must have been 81, 82. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a classic distortion. It's It's warm, it's a little uh, fuzzy. Um, it's a really great pedal. Then here we have a full-tone pedal 
absolutely amazing. But we get to the heavy fuzz pedals uh, later on in this uh, tutorial. Uh, then we get to the Ibanez Stereo Chorus, which was the second pedal that I bought of Ibanez. It's also somewhere in 81, 82. Uh, very nice and lush. Great pedal. Uh, then we go to a pedal that is um, Earthquake Devices. Uh, this is the Interstellar Orbiter, um, which is like an LFO with filters. Almost like a Leslie, you can do really um, crazy stuff with it. Um, this is the Particle by Red Panda. This is a really crazy box. It does all these really, really, really weird uh, things. But you will hear that in a minute when I'm gonna make some music. This blue box, I don't even know how this thing is called. Uh, I got it at a certain point. Um, with uh, uh, a credit to Sarah Lipstate. Um, she has a band Noveller, uh, Noveller, sorry. And uh, she uses this pedal and I asked her, what is this pedal? And she was kind enough to share it with me. And after a long time of looking on eBay, I found it. I'm still figuring out what it really, really does because it doesn't come with the manual, but um, you can record some audio in and then you can pitch shift it and you can reverse it. You can do all these really, really uh, cool things with it. But if you want to really see an expert at work, just go find her on YouTube and see what she does with that thing. Um, here we have another earthquake device, uh, Afterneath, and um, this is like a crazy reverb thing. It never seems to stop. Here we have a delay um, that I'm gonna play around with. And here we have uh, a reverb also made by uh, Red Panda. Uh, and the delay is called Avalanche Run. Um, then the output of that goes into the hologram dream sequence where you could do um, certain modulation techniques in a rhythm uh, with some pitch shifting. And um, it creates really interesting sequences. The output of that then goes into the Eventide harmonizer that I have now set to, um, what is it? Some sort of a chorus, and I get very easy. Make that very intense, with the depth a little more. Anyway. So I've got all these pedals hooked up. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them all, um, but at least um, uh, I have these hooked up if I wanted to, wanted to use them, so I'm just gonna play a little bit of uh, music through these pedals. And the reason why I'm doing this is not to show you that, I, that I'm a great guitar player, because I'm not. Um, but in, in this form, I create soundscapes and then I sample these soundscapes. And if you can remember, there was one tutorial that was about samplers and I was talking about the Roland samplers and I played all these guitar sequences that were sampled and treated within the sampler. And I said in another tutorial, I will show you how I make these loops and these sounds. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you right now. So when I play guitar, I never play guitar really along with the track, except when it uh, come from, uh, comes to uh, Mad Max and Divergent, I did it uh, there. Uh, and I'm gonna show you more about Mad Max in a little bit. But um, now I just wanna focus on creating those really dreamy soundscapes that I then sample and uh, do stuff with. So. Let's start with that. Uh, I'm gonna switch on my chorus. I'm gonna switch this thing. Okay. I'm actually gonna put my glasses on so I can actually see a little better what I'm doing. Sore eyes, you know, getting older.
And that was that. Um, <clears throat> so for me, it's a really nice way to just drift off and just making cool sounds. And then the next day, I'm just going to go through it and chop it up and, you know, sample it in samplers. And then I can play it on the keyboard and do all these really interesting things with it. So for me, this is a great way of um, uh, spending time <laughs> at first, but um, also just um, um, create these, you know, just interesting soundscape and come up with uh, different types of riffs or melodies and things like that. And um, it's all pretty crunchy, you know, you heard some <laughs> here and there, but that, it's the, um, it's kind of the beauty of it. It's like all these pedals in one another and they kind of overdrive each other. So it's hard to <coughs> control that, but that has a charm uh, to it too. So um, that was that part. So let's now move to the fuzz boxes. <coughs> Let me switch my guitar back on. So as we heard, it's already a little bit crunchy itself. Let me make sure that the chorus is off. So first I want to talk about the graphic fuzz um, by Electroharmonix. Probably by far my favorite. Um, it's basically fuzz box, but it has a graphic EQ uh, built into it. And then, you know, you, have, you can set your output level. It actually goes up to plus 15 dB or something. So it will really overdrive the input of your uh, guitar amp. <clears throat> this is one of the boxes that I used for uh, Map Max. The other one is um, uh, the full drive uh, MOSFET, which is uh, also another, another fuss. So let me play how this thing sounds. <clears throat> Ended there with the, the do for your riff. So this is one of the boxes that I used. I really, really, really love that thing. So the other thing is the fuzz tone, which sounds a little warmer. A very, very, very nice sound. So let's compare that with the other one. Also a really nice sounding box. So, but actually for Map Max, um, I didn't record it the way I do it right now at home. Um, there's another video in the first tutorial that is specifically about the Doof Warrior. You see my orange amp and you see this MOSFET pedal and a few other pedals. I think it's the same guitar or it's that black grayish Gibson, the other guitar that I really like. Uh, anyway, uh, so that is it for the, for the, for the guitars. 
Um, now we're just gonna switch a couple of things around here and then I'm gonna play the bass. So, see you in a second. Okay, we changed some things around. We're back. Now I'm holding a bass. This is the Fender Jazz Bass. Um, I think this is the Marcus Miller uh, version, um, which is an active bass. So if I play it um, without doing anything, That's a sound that's already nice and bright, but if I make it active, it's gonna be way louder. And now it has a even more low end and more high end. So, um, that's a nice sound, uh, but I also use the bass limiter, the, the one that I mentioned before, also for this machine, uh, it does really, uh, really cool limiting and it adds some excitement to it and uh, it almost sounds like um, um, The bass uh, player of the who so it's it's very slappy. I also hit the strings like really loud So it sounds with that pedal just alone. It sounds like this So I really like that, that really uh, slappy sound. Now let's um, uh, add a distortion to it. So I, may, I changed the settings a little bit on the graphic fuzz and a little bit on the, uh, the full overdrive. And um, you get this really aggressive uh, sound. And this is what I used a lot for uh, Map Max to play along with um, the, the basses in the orchestra uh, to create a, a lot of distortion, a lot of uh, grit. I really like that distortion sound. Let's compare that with uh, with uh, the graphic fuzz. That sounds now completely different compared to to the to the guitar. Anyway, not so much more to tell about the bass. Um, that's usually what I do. I um, uh, double the the, um, uh, the bass lines with um, with the bass. Um, I would. I'm not playing along the whole score, but I would record the riffs individually that are being used by the basses. And then in Cubase, way more easy um, just to copy them in where they uh, where they need to go. I've also sampled the bass um, multiple times with different sounds. So I would take something like this. And I record it and play bass line with the samplers. But I use the same technique as what I showed in another video with the synth sampling. I would sample the bass high. And then play it on the keyboard an octave lower so you get that really grit that I showed you in those, uh, in those videos. Anyway, so this is what I wanted to show you about the basses and the guitars. Uh, I hope you liked this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.